back again to talk to you guys about something that is being a little overlooked these days. And I find that on the younger generation or newer business owners. So I just want to cover five basic things, tips, um, what have you, that would explain, I would say, customer service in a nutshell. And the difference, as my friends or people are asking, between ghetto and professional. Okay, so let's just keep it on those threads. So first things first, okay? Customer service means service with a smile to me. Now I'm old school, been in business for over 20 years, and where I come from, if you have a traditional store or someone opening or walking into your business in their presence, they would need to see a smile that is welcoming. Are you smiling ridiculously as if you have nothing going on and you're falling all over yourself? Absolutely not. But a regular smile. Service with the smile is where that term came from. Haven't heard it in a long time, so I'm reinstating it. Service with a smile. Second thing is you want people to feel welcome. That's why you're smiling. To let them know, yes, I'm open. I want to do business. How can I serve you? Part of being a business owner is servanthood. And I'm not sure if that's a missing piece, but it's not just oh, this is a good time to be black and in business and because I'm black, you should service me. But a part of that is I need to service you as the client so that you know that I appreciate what you're doing and the fact that you're entering my space to do business with me. All right, so that's two. That's kind of two that was acknowledging people. I'm going to elaborate on number two with the acknowledge people because what else I see happening is someone comes into your business or they connect with you online and then you hear no one respond. So I would now say engage in a conversation. Hi, how can I help you? Or hello, good afternoon. Let me know if you need any help. If someone is perusing a store or if they walk in, I'm going to talk about specifically uh, my field because as a salon, um, a stylist, people walk into the salon when you would look up at somebody you catch eye contact and you directly address them hi how can I help you not that's different I won't say not because it's done all the time there's a difference between how can I help you as opposed to how can I help you it doesn't have the warmth it doesn't have the attachment it doesn't have the feeling it doesn't make me feel like I want to stay and be a part of this environment so first thing is service with a smile. The second thing is acknowledge people that are entering your service space. If people reach out to you via technology, social media, some type of way, shape, or form online, you would need to address them. That's why a lot of um, people and businesses are having autoresponders because you want people to know that, yes, I got your message and I will respond to you and get back to you. I want your business. If you don't have an autoresponder, also understand if people reach out to you, your time frame in, in getting back to somebody is important. And if you don't ever get back to them, then they also know, okay, I don't want to do business here. They don't want my business and they go somewhere else. All right. Third thing, biggest pet peeve of mine ever in a salon. And I used to do it when I was young and I didn't know any better, but it is very unprofessional. Now, I'm going to tell you here the difference between unprofessional and ghetto. So unprofessional is having a conversation on the phone while you're servicing someone else. There's a difference between answering the phone because you don't have um, an assistant or um, someone to answer your phones, right? An assistant or someone that's at the service desk. You don't have that. You're your own, um, you'll take your own appointments and you make your own appointments. So if I answer the phone to book an appointment because I'm there by myself, that's one thing. But I am looking to also tell the person I have to call them back so I don't have the person on hold on my ear or I'm servicing you because that's now cutting into your service time. I want you to feel important like you know that your business matters to me. Does it happen? Absolutely, because you know if your stylist or your nail tech or whoever doesn't have someone to take that appointment, they might step away for a moment, but only for a moment. And sometimes, no. Sometimes it doesn't have it doesn't need to take place at all. If you have an answering service, you check your machine at the end of day and respond to calls. If you're taking walk-ins and you need to know people to know I'm available, I have walk-in availability, then you take calls absolutely. But you're brief with those calls. Here's where it could get ghetto. It gets ghetto when you decide to stay on the phone and have a whole conversation that I'm not a part of in any way, shape, or form over my head, in front of me, around and about me, because now we're not engaging, 
And now I'm talking about, this is the ghetto part for me. You're talking about your man, your night last night, what you did, what you didn't do, what you, you know, how much you drank, how much you threw up, your hangover you're currently having, all of these things. Now, the person who's in the chair might be a friend of yours. They might be cool with the conversation. But still, if they're not a part of the conversation, there's still a disconnect that they're not engaging with you. So you're just having conversation with another person, your friend, or you're talking to your man, you're having a whole argument, or just discussing everything random but that person who's with you currently servicing you. You're talking about how you got to get this money and how you working so hard while a client is in front of you. It's not, it's not. That's the, that, to me, that's the ghetto part. It's also unprofessional. So having conversation and then the type of conversation you have is the difference. All right, let's see. That was number three, talking over somebody's head. Number four, the type of conversation. Okay, and phone etiquette. Same thing. If I'm in front of you, I'm going to answer the phone the same way as if I'm not in front of you. I'm going to answer it with a smile. You can hear a smile through the phone. I don't know. I, 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 I took business management. I, I know what it takes to do certain things. And service and customer service is what this whole world is kind of moving away from. But service with a smile on the phone, you can hear someone answer the phone and say, hello, how can I help you? As opposed to, hello, how can I help you? There is a difference maker. You can read a few books on it that will tell you how to change your conversation and how your speech comes across. All right, so that was... Um, service with a smile on the phone as well as in person next thing is hmm all right there's a twofold thing dressing to just dressing for success and we could go on and all on and on for days about this different stylists we have all different styles we have different opinions um but typically you might want to be covered up so in school in cosmetology school, we teach, you know, you cover, you have shoes that cover your feet and comfortable shoes since you're going to be on your feet all day. But you also would wear a smock or some type of cape or draping so that you don't spill chemicals on yourself while you're working. Or if a, a, a scissor or anything, hot iron or something falls, there is a space where you can have something covering you and it's not going to be in direct contact with your skin. I'm going to put my extra two cents in here since this is my video and say nobody wants your titties in their mouth while you're shampooing their hair if you're still using the bowl that goes around the front. Nobody wants that. Nobody necessarily wants to see all your chest or cleavage in their face at all while you're doing their service or providing them a service. When you lean over, when you're um, cutting hair, when you're doing what have you. And yes, do we all do it? I used to do it all the time. Short skirts, heels, and whatnot at work all day and night. Like, there's a difference in how you work, but it also affects your body long term. Ask me how I know. Anyway, so that's one thing. Last but not least, guys, and I think I'm past five. But last but not least, having a license nowadays is like kind of going obsolete, but it's really not. And though we might be in quarantine and we might be kind of shut down with the statistics with the government and being able to get paperwork, everything is kind of open with online. You can have online access. So all of you guys who went to cosmetology school and got licensed but didn't take your test, or you didn't take your test and so you don't have your license, but you did complete school, or all the people who are so self-taught and have no idea about school or planning on going to school, got you. All of that is fine and well. But at the end of the day, there is a coverage when you're licensed by the state of wherever you live that says you are licensed to perform this service. So there are basic things that you were taught safety procedures and all types of things that I'm seeing that are not covered. I'm going to end on this story. A girlfriend just called about a nice fancy pedicure location that she was going to. What makes certain things fancy is how you zhuzh up the names and titles of your service, right? So somebody could have had a service based on... So having a license still matters, whether you... um 
don't know the procedures about how to give a pedicure, which she was at this pedicure spot and the young lady had a ring light near the water. Now, I know you guys know common sense, but common sense is not common for everyone. So what I would imagine is that she didn't know that taking the person's foot in and out of that pedicure spa, her splashing the ring light, the plugs, the outlets, all of that thing could be an issue. So no, just, just no. So for that person, all those people, you guys are out here, you just want to make money, you want to be doing the most, you want to just be hustling, getting yours, you feel like it's okay to grab up a few items to be in business in. There are certain tools that you need to know about before you dive into business. A pedicure spa should have the proper chair, not a salon chair, and you will need to know these things so that way... You could do the best in business. You could give the best service. So I'm going to wrap up with this finance piece. A lot of people complain about how much that uh, business owners are charging to be in business. There's certain types of services that you do pay better money and better quality service. You pay more money for that. Something that you walked in off the street, you don't have a pedicure spa, you have a chair, but you don't show certain things. You're using a light on the floor next to water. You're using a, a regular um, petty bowl, um, a basin to do the pedicure in. You have your towel, your accessory, all of that. I'm not downing it because everyone has to start where they are, right? But there are certain things that are unethical in terms of safety features and the way you do business with people. So be careful on how you feel like, oh, I'm self-taught and it doesn't take much to do hair, makeup or nails or any of this stuff. We just, you know, I could do it because you have the skill and you can make things look beautiful. But behind the scenes on the business side of it and just on the safety side of it, you need to know what things you can and can't mix, what chemicals don't work together. And those are the type of things that you guys pay, pay stylists for. You pay stylists and colorists to know know pH balances and how color systems work in order for your hair not to turn or, um, the wrong color or to just fall out altogether. Those are the type of things that you pay for. That's the type of information and knowledge base that a lot of people do not have. Yes, can you go on YouTube and find a lot of videos? Yeah, but I'm on YouTube too and I'm really looking at things and I'm wondering why you guys are, are, are like, you're not getting the full pieces. So that's all. I just wanted to say this is how you should do business, whether it be in 2020 or 1995. We're in 2020 right now. Customer service is still relevant. Make sure you're connecting back with people. Make sure you have the proper tools when you're doing business and get licensed, guys. Get licensed.